Okay, Pastor Carter, we are back on and we are officially live now on Ninth Street Missionary Baptist Church page. Thank you so much. Listen, we want to welcome everybody in social media land. Listen, it is once again a message Monday here by way of the Ninth Street Missionary Baptist Church and a place of a place of hope, our nonprofit uh end of Main Street Missionary Baptist Church and we want to thank everyone for being a part on this day. We want to thank everybody for uh, coming out uh, by way of Zoom, by way of uh, Instagram, by way of also Facebook Live. Listen, you know what we do on Monday nights? This is where uh, realism, uh, reality, and we try to give you a broad perspective of, of, of life in general uh, if you would, um, just opportunities to, to learn something valuable for you and your family and for individuals that, um, that, that, ser that seriously don't know uh, about some of the things that we discuss um, that, are, that are realistic uh, to your life's well-being. And on this day, we simply have invited our very own state representative, um, Mr. Jay Richardson, is with us on today. And we are certainly glad to have him uh, in this room via live, uh, Facebook Live, and by way of Main Street Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, State Representative Richardson, we welcome you today. And thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come and be a part of this, uh, of this, Zoom, this Zoom meeting uh, in discussion about voting on tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's a pleasure and an honor. Uh, I'm really humbled that you guys asked me to, to participate this evening, so I'm looking forward to it. Sure. Yes, sir. I'll tell you what. Um, last, what was it, two weeks ago, we were in discussions about, uh, about voting and really trying to educate individuals, uh, not just our church family, but everyone that came onto the Facebook Live and also to the Zoom uh, regarding and pertaining to voting and the importance uh, of voting at this very, at this time, at this crucial time, a critical time of our nation, of our state, and then even our local government. And so on tonight, I would, uh, I would simply like to ask you to really introduce yourself and tell the people who you are. Absolutely. So my name is Jay Richardson. I am the state representative for District 78, which basically covers the north side of Fort Smith. Uh, it, it's interesting. I, I tell people the north side of Fort Smith, but I only go to a certain level. Mm -hmm. So if you were to draw a line from the bridge that goes from Roland into Fort Smith, I'm on the left side. So everything left of Garrison Avenue all the way to St. Scholastica. Uh, then we kind of jog around uh, in front of uh, UAFS mm -hmm. all the way to 50th, back out to the river and everything on the left side of 50th Street. So Sutton Estates, Allied Garden, all of those are outside of District 78 and actually fall under someone else who is Cindy Crawford. Uh, this will be my, I'll be going into my second term. <clears throat> the first term, uh, we were able to get some good things done, uh, but I'm really excited about the second term because I've got some, some pretty aggressive uh, legislation that I'm trying to push through beginning in January. So. Uh, born and raised in Fort Smith, and I'm sorry, I wasn't born in Fort Smith, I was born in Florida, but raised in Fort Smith, uh, as far as I can remember, grew up in Rolling O's, uh, most people know some part of my family, either my mother who, uh, Sissy, who sang in the choir at, at, at King Solomon for many years, or, or my father, Jimmy, uh, so I've got several friends that attend your church, and, and family, families of friends that attend your church. So I'm pretty excited to be here and hopefully I can add some, some information that maybe people don't already, that they don't know or elaborate more on things that they do. Yes, sir. Well, we want to tell you, thank you uh, once again, and thank you for the job that you are doing within, uh, within our community, because I know the North side of, of Fort Smith uh, needs you uh, and needs your, uh, your expertise. Uh, and your servanthood as it pertains to uh, our side of the city. So um, we're glad to have you tonight. Sister Carter, you want to you. You kick us off? Yeah, I actually had a question for you, uh, Mr. Richardson. And that was, what 
made you interested in politics altogether. I was trying to do my research on your your do a bi, um, your, read your biography today, and it didn't give me a whole lot of information to find out how did you actually get into politics. What what sparked that interest for you? So it, it, it won't give you that much information because I had no desire to be in politics <laughs> uh, up until a couple of years ago. So my wife and I, uh, who I'll be married to 26 years in December, uh, were actually living in Phoenix and decided to quit our jobs, sell our business and move back to Fort Smith because this is where we wanted to be. Uh, prior to doing that, we, we basically, uh, I'll say we kind of hatched a plan of what we wanted to do and how we wanted to contribute to the community when we moved back. And in doing so, we knew that, uh, thought that I could, I could bring the most to the community from a state perspective and she could bring the most from an education perspective, specifically speaking about, uh, the, uh, the school board that she's on, uh, Pastor, I hate to say this, but can I have you hold for one moment? I'm go so ahead, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Hey, everything right here is it's all good. We are, uh, what's the word? We chill. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but while we're waiting on him to get back, if you are watching, just uh, we want to talk about, we're going to get into the early voting, but we want to make sure you guys already know that today mm -hmm. was the first day uh, to start early voting in Arkansas. Of course, where we are, we've been into it for a whole week already, but um, we hope that you, we're going to talk a little bit more about the voting process and why it's important. I just want to throw it out there. If in case you did not know, today was the first day to start mm -hmm. early voting in the state of Arkansas, okay? That is correct. Uh, and I'll, I'll just pick back up from where I left off. I apologize again for having to step away for a moment, but uh, but we, we moved back and my wife wanted to be on the school board and I wanted to operate from a state perspective. Wasn't quite sure what that looked like. Uh, sat down with George McGill when I first moved back uh, and kind of told him what I was thinking. Uh, and then that kind of was it. Uh, from that point on, we just went on to working every day. And then uh, basically George called me one day and said, hey, think, I think I'm going to run for mayor and I want you to take my seat. And that's kind of how it happened. Uh, a conversation over at the McGill Center with me and him and He's the mayor and I'm your state representative. And that's kind of how it happened. Wow. That's a good, that's a good tandem. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> so um, I would ask, um, you know, and, and not to really infringe upon that relationship or friendship, but at the same time, um, did he give you the, the really the, the ins and the outs of uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly of, of being a state representative and, and just giving you, I think, a lot of pointers uh, on becoming uh, what the job would entail. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he, he, you know, even before I got in the office, I spent a lot of time in Little Rock with him, you mm -hmm. know, being in committee meetings, walking through the Capitol, kind of figuring out the flow of things. So uh, I, I consider George a mentor. Mm -hmm. and and have been for for a while so I, I continue to lean on him when i've got questions and everything but yeah I, I would say if there was ever a perfect storm it was that one of which he prepared me to take on this role so he's been he's been very supportive and really helped me uh gain a, a good strong hold on what i'm doing here at the state okay good good shout out to mayor uh george mcgill um absolutely in the job that he's doing there within the city of uh, Fort Smith. And uh, I will tell all of us that's online tonight, please let's continue to pray and stay and stick behind our mayor. Amen. In times, Amen. times like these. Uh, Sister Carter, you want to bring forth our first question tonight? Yes, we want to talk about the importance of uh, taking advantage of early voting. And, you know, we really just want you to encourage the people why voting matters, because there are still some people who are hesitant about casting their vote. They still think that, you know, their vote does not matter. Uh, absolutely. And, and, and that's not an uncommon opinion or mentality around voting. You know, if we go back in, in not just in the city of Fort Smith, but in other areas of the state where we saw uh, people won elections by one or two votes, mm -hmm. uh, that, that is huge in what happens in our state from, our, from a legislative perspective. But if we look at things from a from a more 
a holistic approach in, in terms of whether we go from the president even down to uh, our justice of the peace. I mean, it's important that people become active in their civic obligation. Uh, it's important that you get out and your voice be heard. And I know that's, uh, that's you know, everybody says that, get out and let your voice be heard. But the fact of the matter is, people don't get in these offices without those votes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and while, you know, you have some people who really feel that they're going to try to do their best to quench that vote, it's more important now than ever that we get out and really vote for what we believe in. And, and I'm not just going to focus on the, the presidential race, but I want to bring to everybody's attention that we've got some other major things that impact us daily in the city of Fort Smith. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got a judge who's running right now, you know, uh, Rita Howard, who's running right. against Greg Magnus. Right. Rita has an opportunity to be the first judge in Fort Smith. Mm -hmm. And it, it, as all of you know, you know, we need a judge that looks like us, that's helping guide us in the right direction. I mean, yeah. far too often we've got people, I'm not going to say young men, I'm just going to say people of color that mm -hmm. go up in front of judges that don't look like them and they don't always get the, the fairest shake. And this right. is our opportunity to put somebody in there who has our best interests at heart and who's been doing the work. I mean, yeah. she's been active in the community, in her church, in Fort Smith for a long time. Uh, she just didn't decide to get on the school board and, 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 and the thought of trying to run for a judgeship. So I would recommend, or I wouldn't recommend, I would, I would uh, ask that those of you that are on the call that you would reach out and go out and vote for, I'm not going to tell you to vote for, but I'm going to tell you, she's a prime candidate that has our best interest at, at heart. Uh, and then a couple of other issues that you'll see on the, the ballot that again directly impact what's happening in the city of Fort Smith. They they wanted to continue the half cent sales tax on the roads. Anybody who's driven around Fort Smith knows what the roads look like. We know some of the flooding that's occurring not only on Townsend but on 10th and 11th Street, mm -hmm. uh, even in neighborhoods on 7th, uh, 6th. I mean, I, I could go on and on. Mm -hmm. We've got some issues with roads uh, and, and drainage from that perspective. But but specifically regarding roads. This issue number uh, one will continue the half cent sales tax uh, to continue to maintenance or improve the maintenance that is happening on the roads that we have. And one of the good things about this sales tax going into effect that we didn't have before is there's a member for the first time, we've got a member on the highway commission that's from Fort Smith that we haven't had before that can help funnel funds specifically to the city of Fort Smith that we didn't have before. So that's that's definitely a positive to, to think about when you're out there voting. Again, I'm not telling you what to vote for. I just want you to be aware of the things that directly impact us uh, in a long term, from a long term perspective in a long term sense. Uh, if we were looking at the presidential election, mm -hmm. my feedback to you would be uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic and all the data, all the scientists tell us that we could be much better off than what we are now. And it's important that we have somebody that's in that position that's willing to uh, identify that there are challenges, uh, that there is science out there, in addition to understanding that, that there's a level of faith that we have to have and, and not be so blinded uh, to our own <laughs> ambitions. Mm -hmm. uh, that we've got to do better. I mean, Fort Smith, I don't know if you guys know, but Arkansas, not Fort Smith, Arkansas is number two per capita in deaths due to COVID. And that just didn't happen. I mean, this is something that I think we could have got out in front of uh, and hopefully we'll, we'll do better with that and, and people will continue to stay safe wearing the mask and keeping the distance. And I apologize. I don't even know if that's what you really asked me to speak on. I just okay, kind of went out on a tangent. Fun. So. <laughs> That's why we are here, man. We we are literally wanting to educate. Um, we are wanting to educate people, um, and, and predominantly the African American population. Our people need to be educated. And, yes. Uh, and there's no sugar coating for me. It is what it is. And yeah. uh, we are no longer wanting to be sitting on the sideline or uh, uneducated as it pertains to 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 voting our rights. Um, and then um, putting the correct people in place that can literally that have your best interest at heart, and um, that's what that's what I am preaching. 
uh, to our people is that we want to put the best people in place that are, that have your best interest at heart. And a lot of times we just go and we just select individuals uh, just because of, uh, of past, past relationship, past uh, this and that. And no longer should we be doing those things. We really need to research the individuals who are, who, who, who are on the ballots for us and then make the correct choice. So I agree. I agree. And with that said, you know, that's a that's a very good point about understanding who's out there and who's on the ballot. And I'm giving an example right now. Um, Cotton is running against Ricky Harrington, I think is his name, mm -hmm. uh, for a Senate seat. Uh, everybody's familiar with Cotton and understand where he stands. And it is my opinion that Cotton does not have our best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. uh, and the young man or the, the gentleman who's running against him is actually not in the party that I represent, but he has some fantastic views. He has a great, he, he in my opinion, is the better person. Uh, again, I'm not telling you who to vote for. I'm just telling you to research uh, uh, Ricky Harrington and, and find out for yourself so that you can make an informed decision. Mm -hmm. But that's another huge race that, that will truly impact us long term. I mean, I think that's a six year term that mm -hmm. they're running for right now. And I could be wrong. I'll have to check. But but it's not just uh, just something that we've got to deal with for a year or two. This could be a long term impact. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you said that, too, because I think a lot of times when we go to vote, we just vote and say, you know, I'm voting for everyone in that party that for the party that I'm I'm for. And we never even uh, consider what their agendas are and how it's going to benefit us as a people. So that that's a great point, because I could very easily um, go and vote for a Republican because of their views and what they stand for will actually benefit me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay, Pastor Carter. Yeah. If you had to, um, if you had to say right now, from a political standpoint, what do you feel like our very best need at this time and our focus should be on. And we're gonna talk from a we're gonna talk from a local, a state, and then a national perspective. Uh, it, it's my opinion that the one thing I think we've got to focus on encompasses all three of those. Okay. And that's our judicial system. I mean, how we've got people uh, that continue to overpopulate our jails and the overcrowding that we have is a direct result in, in, in my opinion, of just putting people away without giving them what they need. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at Sebastian County, Sebastian County is one of the highest in just sending people straight to jail. You know, you look at some of the same offenses that people are having, specifically people that have color that look like us mm -hmm. that are getting charged with, uh, you know, jail time, if you go in another place and you bring them down to Pulaski County, they're getting fined for those same things. So those are things that we've got to watch and we've got to be aware of and, and begin to, to fight against. And it's my opinion, or it's my goal from a state perspective is to begin to change some of those laws that give so much carte blanche to mm -hmm. our current prosecuting attorneys within the, within each County. Mm -hmm. uh, the second piece of that is if, if, if people don't understand this, but prosecuting attorneys and public defendants, the price gap or the, the wage gap between those two is crazy. It can range anywhere between 30 and $40,000 from a public defender, and what he or she is getting paid and a prosecuting attorney. So not only are we paying the prosecuting attorney, uh, you know, 40% less than what the prosecutor is getting. This mm -hmm. person has a docket of 30 people that they're trying to see over the course of a day. I mean, our justice, to sit, our justice system is broken. And until we acknowledge the fact that it is broken and we have to fix it, we'll continue doing the same thing. So it is me and my peers, specifically me and the, uh, the, the Black Caucus here in the state are working on legislation in January to, to help address some of these things and fix some of these problems going forward. Okay, we have a people. Uh, and now I'm going to speak from a um, from a church standpoint, uh, pastors that are watching tonight, I'm encouraging you. Um, churches that are watching tonight, I'm encouraging you. 
how can we, uh, Representative Rich Richardson, how can we help you in this process or in these endeavors to see that these these um, these these obligations that you are trying to meet? How can we? How can we? How can we help you? How can we assist as a people? Uh, good question. Um, you know, the first and foremost, it definitely be always praying for us in, in these roles. Uh, the, the second thing is when these things happen or when you hear about them, bring it to my attention. Mm -hmm. You know, bring it to the mayor's attention. I mean, if, if these things are going on, you got to let us know. And pastors that, that are, are leading these churches, you know, people are comfortable coming to you, talking to you about these things because you're leaders in the community. Mm -hmm. And what I would ask is that once you get that information, not only share that information with me, but make yourself available to help me move the dial, move the needle down in the direction that we need to have. So as we move forward into our next legislative session that begins in January, Pastor Carter, I'm going to be reaching out to you to potentially come down and speak on behalf of some of the people that you represent in your church to help move some of these laws forward. And what I ask is that you would make yourself available and supportive as you always have, as mm -hmm. you always have to continue to do that. And I think those are things that, that can definitely uh, help us in the short term. Long term, I would ask that you guys continue to preach uh, and continue to talk about seeking knowledge about what's going on. There is no reason that our community doesn't know what's going on because everything's out there. Yes. It's just making a concerted effort to go find the information. Mm -hmm. uh, get involved with the city because that's where we live. Go to the board of directors meetings. See what's going on. If you can't go to the meeting, watch it on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Go to the school board meetings. Find out what's going on. Parks and commission, park and rec. I mean, all of these things that are happening at a local level because it is my, it is my belief that true legislation happens at a local level. Yeah. And, and the things that impact us happens at a local level. But if you look, uh, we're, we're not really involved with those things. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, we'll go to a, a board of directors meeting and, and, and the largest board of director meeting I was was at was during the, the rebel thing between Southside. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's when we had the most people out and involved. But what we don't realize is decisions that are being made at the board of directors meetings are happening and we have a voice and we are able to speak out on those things and we can support people like Andre Good, who's out there fighting for us on a daily basis. And we need to be more active in those meetings and they need to see us at yeah. those meetings. And that's what's important. And, and, and that's how you and other pastors can help. Okay. Hey, pastors, y'all heard that tonight. I need, I, I need, I need at our next meeting, uh, pastors meeting, hey, these are some things that we need to bring up, even if we have to invite uh, Representative uh, Richardson again out via Zoom or what have you, uh, so that he can give us that vital information and, and point us in the right direction in which we need to do. Because so many times now, uh, it is not a, it's not a time for us to be still, like I said before, on the sideline. It's time for us to get in the game. And uh, we have a voice and we're, we're needing to put people in place that don't mind speaking up uh, mm -hmm. for the people uh, in which in which they uh, they represent. So yeah. uh, once again, great information. Go ahead, Sister Carter. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say. I know I probably sh I probably shouldn't say this, but if I could vote in Arkansas, I would vote for you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. No, I, I actually did some research because that is so vital is a lot of times is, is we don't educate ourselves. We don't uh, get involved. And you said this at the beginning. It's our civic duty. It's our responsibility, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago to um, get involved in our local government, you know, and go to those meetings and ask those questions to the people that, you, that are representing you, you know, challenge them. I know you yes. want to be challenged, right? Right. Yes. You should, challenging uh our the people who represent us so i think that's so key right now is that we educate ourselves and get to the polls so that we can uh vote the right people in place who are going to benefit us in the long run mm -hmm. that was a, that was a question tonight online uh that question was uh from lisa franklin she said how can we encourage people 
uh, to become active in the community? Uh, that's that's good, Lisa. And I'm, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it 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 comes back to to them seeing it. It's my opinion that they need to see other people out there doing it, right? Because you got a lot of people who who feel a certain way. My voice isn't heard, or they're not going to listen to anything that I say or anything that I'm I'm doing. But uh, you know, people follow leaders, and, and and I think Pastor Carter, you would be one of the prime candidates for that. They they will follow your lead, uh, Lisa Franklin. People will follow your lead. Mm -hmm. The same way that people follow us on Facebook and Twitter, they'll follow us out to the yeah. polls or follow us out to a meeting to mm -hmm. see uh, what's being on the agenda at a, at a, at a, at a city board meeting. Mm -hmm. But we've got to be active. I, 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 I've told this story before, but, you know, when people say, I don't think one, one vote counts, but I, I'll tell you, compare that to being in the closet with one mosquito and tell me how you feel with that one mosquito. Because it, it only takes one. And the more active one person is, the more it can ripple into others. And, and, and that, that's what we need. And, and I think people need to see more of us out moving and shaking and, and really uh, trying to do the right things for, for our community. What do you say to the, to the young people, those between the young adults, between 18 to 25, those individuals who are, could care less about what is taking place from a government, um, a government standpoint. What do you say to encourage those individuals about getting out and expressing their right uh, uh, to vote? You know that that's a good question because that's an age group that we that from a political side, right? We're we're having trouble reaching that group. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a daughter that that falls into that age group as well, but what I believe is that we've got to show that age group how it truly impacts them from day one. You know, if you have trouble finding a job, you know, you've got to get out and vote for people that can help bring jobs to the area that you live in. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've got a job and you, you're not able to get unemployment. I mean, right now we've got 40,000 people that are awaiting that pandemic unemployment. That's crazy. We've got to vote people in who can help fix those problems. Uh, it, it are those those could be just a couple of things that I, I tend to talk to my daughter about, and even my son, who's eight, about to be nine. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I tell people he's probably more in tune with politics than my 24 year old daughter is right now because mm -hmm. I just force it down his throat. But it, it's going to come to that. It's, it's showing how it how it affects them today, mm -hmm. because it's my opinion that that age group is only concerned about does it really matter to me now. It does. I'm going to give you another example. We passed a law in the last legislative state session here in Arkansas that added more tax to those individuals who were buying hybrid vehicles. Now, you're buying a hybrid vehicle and that age group who's one of the main ones who is worried about the environment. Mm -hmm. You're buying vehicles that are better for the environment, but we're taxing you more because you're helping the environment mm -hmm. rather than gas and oil. Wow. Your vote matters to change those types of things. Wow. Now, now, I, I hope every young person heard that because that was very valuable um, in looking at the, the now and how you can literally set your people. I just want to I want to throw that out there for you because that was good information for all of us. It's part of that question. Yeah, we have a comment in the uh, on the line. They remember you when you were a quarterback at Northside. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> I wasn't a good one. I just participated, but I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. So today was the first day of early voting. Of early voting, and I know that the stats are not out yet, but just from looking at it from a social media standpoint. It looks like we there are record numbers of people who are taking advantage of early voting this year. And so we just want what what can you do to encourage someone to make sure that they go before November 3rd? Like take advantage of this opportunity to get your vote done now. Yeah, it's it's better to get it done sooner rather than later. You know, we're we're some of the worst at procrastinating mm -hmm. and waiting to the last minute and heaven forbid something happens and we can't get out and vote. 
take advantage of this two week cycle that's going on before the election day. And one other thing I wanted to bring to everybody's attention, I've been I've received some information about there being people at the polling sites that are making marks on the ballots that you guys are filling out or that we're all filling out. Mm -hmm. Uh, If somebody that works at the polling site makes a mark on your ballot for whatever reason, one, take a picture, two, ask why are they making that mark, and three, send it directly to me. That should not be happening. And if it is, I, I want to know about it so that I can address that. Uh, so, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I veered off on something that no, you asked me. I can, apologize. Can you, can you repeat that? Because we just had some more people to jump online, and that is very valuable information. Yeah. So if you're if you're going to the polls, no one should make any marks on the ballot that you are filling out to put into the machine. If anybody makes any mark on that machine, you need to ask why and take a picture of the mark that they made on that ballot form and submit that to or send it over to me so that I can I can I can address that. And how do they send that to you? There's one or two ways. Either they can send it to my uh, email address, which is electjrichardson at gmail.com, or by phone. They can feel free to text me, area code 469-853-6963. Perfect. Now, Sister Carter, can you put that, or Sister Lisa, can you type that in the comment section for everyone, uh, the information as it pertains to uh, his contact information? Uh, I would like to ask you, why do you feel like that is taking place? Why are they doing it? So I've, I've, somebody has made that aware. I had a person reach out to me uh, yesterday and say that they had heard that this was going to be happening. Now, again, I don't know if it is or if it's not, but let's make, let's, let's be proactive. If it is, mm-hmm. let's be aware so that we can address that with the, with the polling committees or the election commission at that point. And that's something I can take full advantage of and take care of. Yeah. Did you have okay. question? yeah, I just wanted to get the the number one more time. Area this code 469 853 But please tell people I can't help you on your water bill because I've gotten those calls too. But I can help you with this uh with the election piece and anything at the state level. Okay. Hey, y'all heard it for y'all self. No water bill. <laughs> not today right. so listen um we just had a young lady she she posted she said that i don't vote and um you know that's what i feel like that's why we're here tonight is to encourage individuals uh about, yes. educate them about why you should uh, knowing that yeah it may be too late for you to register this time mm-hmm. but for next year, um, your vote, it simply matters uh, because a lot of, we don't, our voice is not the voice. We can speak, we are, we are literally speaking through Mr. Richardson and others uh, that are able to help us. And they are in some places and some positions uh, normally that we're not even able to get into. And so, uh, and if you want change, if you want change, if you've been crying and fussing and fighting out there about this is not working or this is not happening in your community, here's your opportunity. But we have to go by uh, go about it the right way. And so yeah. that's why we have representatives. That's why we have individuals, uh, uh, Senate leaders, uh, who are able to talk for us uh, and, 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 and pretty much uh, come to the point of, um, of, of making some of those prayer requests that we want make them happen, okay? Now, we ain't calling him God, but we are sending some requests his way. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so tell us, this young lady, what can we, what can we do to encourage her tonight? Again, I, I think it starts, I think people that don't vote need to understand how it impacts them today how it impacts them in their home and in their neighborhood. Uh, You know, voting will impact whether or not you live on 6th or 7th Street and it floods every year Mm -hmm. on the people who can change that. 
Mm -hmm. You know, it's got to be more than just Andre Good down there fighting the fight. We've got to have two or three other people at the city uh, directors that are that are following that same suit. Uh, mm -hmm. Your vote helped put the first black mayor or the, if you didn't vote, it would have helped put the first black mayor in the city of Fort Smith. And he's doing more work than we've seen any other mayor prior to him do. It impacts you. It impacts your child care. It impacts your tax, your sales taxes when you go out and buy a box of Frito or bag of Fritos. All of these things are results of who you put in office, whether it's at the city level or the state level or the national level. It's all impacted by the people you place there. And why you don't think you're impacted and you don't see why it matters, it matters. If you've got a pothole in your street, you don't have any, your, your vote can help put the person there that can get that fixed for you. Right. Listen, North side of Fort Smith, um, here's our representative tonight. And uh, we are, we are literally, uh, he has made himself available for, for us, uh, for our community. And um, the church uh, is also, uh, it needs the same representation. That's why it's so important for all of us to get out and, and cast our vote because at the end of the day, your church is affected too. So mm -hmm. don't ever not think that, um, you know, we're just doing this just because, no, we're not. No, it matters. So um, as we prepare to close this card, you have anything else? Your phone is on mute. You're muted. Um, my apologies. I just wanted to say thank you, um, Mr. Richardson, for joining us on tonight. It has been an awesome discussion. I hope that someone who was watching, if you were not certain about um, about going to the polls to vote, that you have uh, your mind has changed on tonight, and you understand how it impacts you, or even it, it even encourages to, encourages you to go online tonight and do a little bit of research about the people who are on the ballot. So again, thank you so much for taking time. Uh, to uh, hang out with the Carters on tonight. Thank you guys for having me. And hello again to Lisa Franklin. I didn't see her on here, but I know she was asking questions. Yes, sir. Any, any last word from you? No, sir. Just just continue, just continue to do what's right in terms of uh, doing whatever we can to help our community and our city. Uh, we've got a fantastic community of people that are there. Uh, and, and anything and everything that I can do to help anybody, please feel free to let me know. Hey, once again, Fort Smith, 19 Missionary Baptist Church. We want to thank everybody for coming out tonight and being a part of Message Monday. Listen, this is brought to you by none other than 9th Street, a place of hope. Once again, hey, we want to tell you thank you for all the work that you are doing in our community. We want to thank you for uh for being available to the people on tonight, uh, Representative Richardson, and for, for years to come. Listen, we want to make sure that we maintain somebody in office that's going to always have our back. Hey, God bless you and God keep you tonight. And remember, our vision at 9th Street is saving the lost at any cost. Our mission statement at 9th Street is a church growing by God's grace. God bless you and God keep you, my brothers and sisters. Until next time. We'll see you right here on Message Monday. Thank you. Thank you.